All right, we apologize for, for, for that slight technical glitch. We were just having fun right here in studio. As I was saying, uh, thank you very much for keeping it Y254. This is Y in the morning. My name is Ram Maguko. If at all you're just joining us, you're just in time for the next and uh, the last conversation of today right here. And it's all about women. Happy Women's Day to everybody who is watching. It's, it, it's a, a, a International Women's Day today. We are celebrating our own women, those who have stood up, those who have showed up, those who have, uh, you know, come out to uh, stand up for women's rights in different areas. We celebrate you thank you very much for being part of our lives personally i want to celebrate all the women in my life that have established me to become the man that i am today we have posted a question on our social media platforms and uh, we have we are asking there on that uh, particular uh, uh, page y254 is there a woman who has had an impact what made an impact in your life and how did they do it who is that person that made an impact in your life? Head over to Facebook, Y254, drop in your comment. I shall read them at the uh, tail end of this uh, conversation right here on Why in the Morning. We shall sample them up. Head over to Twitter, the hashtag Why in the Morning, at Ram Aguko, at Y254 channel. That is on Twitter. Make sure that you tell us about that particular woman. Now, today... We are, want to focus particularly on about women in geospatial information science. This is women in geospatial information science. And you may wonder, what am I talking about? Well, joining me today to talk about the, you know, their experience in the geospatial field, I'm joined uh, next to me by Nobuiselo uh, Nobu 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 Murage, a research and development lead at the Women in Geospatial Information Science, Kenya. Nobiselo Karibusana? Yes, thank you. I'm also joined to my extreme left by Caroline Akoth, the advocacy lead at Women in Geospatial Information Science, Kenya. Karibusana. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. The hashtag, as always, is one in the morning. Tell us about what you think about this particular field. This one is about, is, is all about finding out how geospatial information system can support gender related issues what are we talking about what are the impacts of the geospatial information system in the country uh the hashtag is always why in the morning as i said at ramagoko at y254 channel head over to facebook and twitter this discussion is going to be interesting happy international women's day to the both of you thank you <laughs> thank you how do you feel you have a whole day for yourselves <laughs> carol women uh -huh. and let me start with the power of a woman in the whole world, that the whole world is celebrating women. What does it, you know, how do you feel? You know, what do you make of it that the women, you know, uh, the impact that they have had in, uh, in the lives of everybody that uh, we live around us? You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good thing that on mm. top of International Women's Day, we celebrate uh, very many other let's say women's day yes yes uh, uh, um, globally it's a it's a it's an amazing thing and i think it's it's a step that the world took all of us together but women have like different days that you know we are celebrating women <laughs> valentine's so women's day there is mother's, mother's day, day, day of the girl child they're the girl child yeah it's it's, it's just strides that the that, that the world has taken uh mm -hmm. towards making our voices heard towards um knowing that women exist and girls exist because Let's agree. Uh, yeah. Traditionally, we were celebrating men a lot. Yeah. Maybe not yeah. intentionally saying today we are celebrating men, but mm -hmm. it was it was like standard. Every day, um, any nice thing that comes up, it's for it's for men. So days mm -hmm. like these are to 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 to, to, to commemorate women, women, to celebrate women, to celebrate girls, and it feels amazing. It feels amazing. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Happy Women's Day to you. Thank you. Man. How does it feel? It feels amazing. Uh -huh. Um, women are the pillar of society. We, yeah, yeah. I think all of us can testify that we would not be here without women. Without women. Our mothers are our teachers, they mm -hmm. are our friends, they are our loved ones, they, they are literally everything that we, how we conceptualize and view society. And it's important that you celebrate them do, do, because do, we would all, no, all not be here without them. Do, yeah. do, do you both have like that? women or those women, those, those particular individuals that have had an impact in your lives? Like, like who for you? For me, it's my mom. 
uh, and my twin sister, they have shaped a lot of how I perceive the world, how I move through and um, carry myself and the courage that I take in doing new things like being on TV. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're, 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 they're those who encourage you to do this? Yeah, they're the ones who encourage me to like go for what I believe in. Um, I, hope, I, I hope they're watching. They are, watching. they are. Hi, Mom. <laughs> uh, Hi, Dad. Uh, <laughs> also. Dad also. But yes. I don't know. So today someone sent me a message saying, Happy Women's Day. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, why would you send me a message and I'm not a woman? And, he, and, and she told me that I celebrate you today because you are also a fighter of women, because you also support women. Does that also make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, the conversation about women's issues and women's rights mm -hmm. has largely to uh, has largely to be to to involve men because mm -hmm. we cannot exclude half the society. We cannot be talking mm -hmm. about that we are advocating for women's rights and we are advocating uh -huh. for the inclusion uh -huh. of women mm -hmm. with, by dis, dis, uh, dis, including disengaging the men. Dis yes, because the, men. the uh -huh. whole point of the women's movement was that we were not actively and intentionally engaged and as we, as a women as a woman and an act activist and a mm -hmm. feminist mm -hmm. we want to engage men just as much as we want to engage women because they, we don't want to turn back now a few few decades from now and talking about men's rights and men's Again. issues uh -huh. we all need to be uh -huh. collectively involved in the society we are creating uh, Carol, who, yeah. who is that woman that stood out for you that is standing out for you in your life that made you who you are today ah oh, my mother <laughs> my mother god bless that woman i hope she lives forever um Amen. she's 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 really been a pillar in my life taught uh -huh. me all the greatest life lessons i know uh -huh. um about hard work about respecting your elders about about being a woman about having impact in the society yeah she's, mm -hmm. she's really been that woman for she, me she has been yeah yeah, yeah. 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 We, we, we thank god for our mothers <laughs> and my mom yeah? We thank God for, 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 for our mothers. They Completely. have made us who we are. Yeah. Yeah? And to the whole crew, why in the morning crew, send your parents a text. Yeah? I'm seeing the, our camera crew. Dan, send your, your people a text. Tell them uh, happy <laughs> International Women's Day. Now, let, let's talk about your spiritual systems. Uh, so this looks like a technical term. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, looks, it, 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 it sounds too technical. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, just to clarify or to give us just a brief or uh, you to highlight, what do we mean when you're talking about geospatial information system? Mm. Okay, um, yeah, I know it's a heavy term and uh -huh. it's those terms that just like... Uh -huh. uh, you see on your face. This is the room and... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but very simply, I'd like to say geospatial is the science of where. It's uh -huh. important for us to understand... Uh, how we perceive the world, even as human beings. Yeah. Like if I tell you to go somewhere, you'd, you'd be like, where, where is it? At what time? You know? Yeah. So geospatial is the science of where, understanding that there are so many different contexts in which we can perceive our, uh, our society and how we can inform policies. Mm -hmm. But if we understand where resources are distributed, mm -hmm. where people are being impacted, and how these people are being impacted differently in these different locations, mm -hmm. then we're including the, the science of where. Mm -hmm. So generally geospatial is the science of where. Okay. Location. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we are talking about women in... Geospatial Information System Kenya. Yeah. So yeah. what is WIGIS, all right? Mm. WIGIS all about, WIGIS KE mm -hmm. all about, Carol. Um, so WIGIS, WIGIS KE is, um, is a platform. We like to call it like an association. It's a group that brings women in our industry together. Uh -huh. mm. um, so we know that uh, generally in the, in the technology field, uh, it's not very common to have, to have women or girls in that field. Um, and Women in GS is a platform that gives us an avenue to network with other women in the industry because mm -hmm. uh, when we started it, it we, were not, we were not very many of us. Um, and probably to also mention that geospatial um, in Kenya is not yeah. offered in, in, in all universities. Like it's, it's offered in select universities. So you can imagine by the time you get to industry, it's mm -hmm. not very many of you. And, mm -hmm. if, and if it's not very many of you, it's difficult to find the other next person. Mm -hmm. So when you're just getting into, into a job industry, you don't have like a, clear, a clear path on how your career uh, is going to project. So you start off as being probably a geospatial in, in, uh, engineer in this firm, and you don't know how, you, how, how the next 10 years, how the next 15 years are going to be looking for you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's basically what Women in GIS does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We find each other. 
Um, and in this group, we will have people who are just getting into the industry and people who have been in the industry for about 20, 15 years. So these are people who will guide us into knowing. Uh, so now you're doing this. In the next in the next five years, you don't want to be doing this. You want mm -hmm. to grow into a different role. Yeah, so yeah. Women in JS is basically a, a platform that offers that. You get yeah. to meet um, other women in the industry who and, do the and, same and, and thing. And connect and relate and learn from each other. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, how, how, was exp how is your experience, especially in this field of, uh, you know, in, in the geospatial field? Yeah, um, for me, my experience was very, um, like, coincidentally, uh, I, did, I, did not, I, I did not know about geospatial and, yeah. until I was in high school. And there was this lecturer from University of Jacob who came to our high school and was telling us about uh, geospatial systems and how you're going to work with satellites and you can eventually go to NASA and that's where my <laughs> mind was hooked like <laughs> there's something that can get me to NASA, NASA. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's how I got into geospatial uh, but moving forward I realized it's it's such a wide field uh, moving mm. from remote sensing to to survey which most people know at yeah. least yeah um, a, lo a lot of kenyans know shamba <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kata shamba yeah. and it's such a wide field and and when i went when, when i got into this industry yeah. and maybe just a personal story of how we just started yes. is uh we f for my particular year when i got in we were only five five ladies when you started the uh, women in the js yeah and we're like ag against uh, 37 men and it was that's first your, of all graduating class yeah and then first of all you are like what graduating is this campus or high school campus in campus, campus. campus. yeah mm. okay uh -huh. yeah so um by the time when we were gra by the time we were graduating we graduated for for ladies and all the men who who were in our class thank you for their support <laughs> um but i got into an industry where i didn't see a lot of people like me we mm. we we had there was a lady who had approached us and there, she was looking for um, ladies in geospatial who can mentor a certain group and we kept on calling we kept on calling people around and mm. and we realized there's no one so we just hosted an event with us. <laughs> so you are the hosts. Yes. And you are the attendees. And we <laughs> and we are the ones without experience. We're the one who are looking for experience yeah. and we are here to tell people about the geospatial industry and we are like two years into the into geospatial the industry yeah. post graduation you, yeah. you, you must have been you know um trying to make things make sense out of things yeah. yet at the same time there are challenges of experience that you still yeah you're uh, looking uh, you're looking for a mentor you're looking for a mentor and the first event we were like the first event was for us to attract mentors to look for people in this industry it was like an event who can like, those who can support you mm -hmm. yeah who can support us and then it turns out like we just catapulted ourselves into being the mentors because it's like oh you organize this thing in just special and we're like actually we're looking for mentors uh, but, but, but thank sure. you <laughs> 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 so uh, it's, it's like, you know, you're going to an event and um, you want someone to like, it's, it's, it's like a, a, asking for, for money. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah. I, I meet you, Carol, and then I'm looking at you and I'm like, I need a hundred bob from you, mm -hmm. but I don't know how to ask you. So when I approach you, you tell me, but then Ram, I need a hundred bob from you. <laughs> Yeah, that's that is, exactly that what is happened. exactly what happened. That is because exactly imagine what happened. we have we have organized uh, this nice event. Uh, the call out is come meet other women in the geospatial industry. Mm. Let's talk. Let's network. Let's learn from each other. So people who come are coming with expectations. Yeah. Um, mm. They are coming with expectations of we are the ones who are teaching them. But now in this case <laughs> we are the ones who are like okay. Uh, we're actually looking for people who are experienced so that we create like a mentorship a yeah. program, uh, program you know like mm -hmm. a, and then we do a match for for people who are currently in uni and uh, we match it to, we match it to people who are in the industry mm -hmm. it, it ended up being us we're the ones who are mentoring the people who came mm -hmm. because <laughs> there's no one else in the industry and, and the event was successful it was it was very yes. successful, um, not just because of the people who attended, mm -hmm. but because of realizing the voice that you had, um, yeah, even however yeah. small or however young you are in your profession. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is what women also need to have. Mm -hmm. No matter how small you may feel, no matter how small you look, mm -hmm. or no matter how minute you, you see your idea to be, mm -hmm. speak it out. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And that's what you did. Yeah. yeah. So if... How long ago was uh, this that uh, since it started? 
the women in GIS? We started in 2017. Okay. Mm. Our, our starting process was, was gradual, if we can say that. Yeah. Um, when we started, I think like three of us were working in the same, the same organization, doing different roles in these organizations. Mm -hmm. So one of the roles, actually the, uh, the role that I was doing, I was in charge of an education conference. Yeah. So part of the work was to, to organize, to plan the agenda, to get speakers for the conference, mm. to, to technically get things going for a conference. So along the way, we realized um, we don't have women speakers. Or the women speakers that we have will say that, oh, my paper is not ready. Um, I haven't been able to submit because... My research project is not done. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I need my supervisor to present with me, but my, 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 supervisor, uh, my supervisor is not available. Um, that was like the, uh, the actual first start of women in GIS. Because mm. then we started something like, just send us your paper, we'll review the paper, and then we'll have a practice session. Mm -hmm. So we started creating mini mini sessions where we uh, we invite people. We uh, we probably have a meeting online, or we use the office boardroom to mm -hmm. to prepare the students and the women to be ready for the conference. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm looking at COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. How was it working through the pandemic for women in GIS? Oh, that was such a beautiful and impactful project mm -hmm. because being able to be brought at the table um, with so many other experts was just very uh, humbling for us. Mm -hmm. So we were part of the uh, technical task force for the Office of the President mm -hmm. uh, to create the decision dash dashboard for COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, and uh -huh. we, we, now this is where we, the science of location comes in comes because in, when okay. we were looking at the the national uh, decision dashboard for covid it was intelligence based location intelligence based mm -hmm. and we're seeing the hotspots occurring in nakuru and nairobi and mombasa mm -hmm. and you're seeing the entry points of um uh, people from abroad coming in and how it's impacting the country and how it's spreading from and how it's uh -huh. spreading from these hotspots mm -hmm. and these epicenters so um, we, we we were part of that task force with several other people at university. J. Quad, uh, there was Jomo Kenyatta University. Oh, you partnered with students Palidia. from different universities. No, no, no not no, students. No. And that was the I think I think that was the greatest thing about our 2020 uh -huh. that yeah. we were a small organization, uh -huh. impactful enough to partner with bigger organizations in Palidia. the industry. Wow. Yeah. So we partnered with Jomo Kenyatta the university, not the students. The university itself. Yeah. 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 Partnered uh -huh. with Palladium. Palladium is a, a, an organization that uh, that supports um, uh, what is it the, the the health the health sector in Kenya to uh -huh. to, to, to deliver health projects. Mm. Uh, there was also Thunderbird, there was Esri who provided software. There was a series of actual stakeholders in the industry that mm -hmm. we that we supported. Mm -hmm. So there was there, there was goodwill. Yes, yes. There was goodwill in them accepting us, accepting mm -hmm. that uh, we are young women in the industry, but we actually know what we are doing. And what we are providing to the project is something something great, you know, that like we are not just reporting mm -hmm. um, every day that we have this number of cases in Kenya. We are reporting that we have 50 cases in Kenya, 25 are in Nairobi, 15 are in Nakuru, and this is how they are going to spread. We are also able to do like some sort of prediction model. Uh, you mm -hmm. remember when um, the president used to have um, the daily briefings? Yes, yes. daily, daily briefings. Brief. And you, also, you, you, you are the people behind those information? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Today we know. <laughs> <laughs> when he said the scientists have advice for us to not open the border, yes. we were the scientists. Yes. You were the ones. Yes. yes. <laughs> you are the reason why Mutai Kago was speaking to us. <laughs> okay, let's look at the projects that uh, you've uh, done in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me the success stories that uh, you know came up from the projects that you've 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 worked with, and uh, what are the uh, you know future expectations of uh, you know women in uh, GIS for the projects that you have uh, mm -hmm. so far. Mm. Okay, maybe just before we get there, I want to circle back to our pillar and our how we function as a community. Okay, okay. okay. Because it defines how we conduct our projects and mm. what uh, engagements we oh, do. Oh, the pillars that you have are the ones that define the projects that you you, yeah. you, 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 you do. Okay. So like we mentioned, um, Women in Jazz started like a, as a networking, networking event. Like we just have monthly sessions and get people together and... Mm -hmm. Um, sort of experts from different fields. Uh, okay, no, just special experts, but we're in different industries coming together. Yeah. And we were just sort of creating a platform where people can discuss things related to the industry, just special industry. It's um, a bit young in Kenya, but mm -hmm. so it's it's in the wider 
uh, internationally, um, geospatial is, is a mature industry, mm -hmm. a bit, but it's a bit young in Kenya, yeah. So that morphed from the networking event, events, it morphed into a community engagement where, where we like gather data sets together and, and put it out to the community for them to analyze and for them to give their own expert of free expert opinion towards the community, uh, towards even it generally for the public to be able to say that this and this, we looked at it this way and it can, imp it can impact the society if we were able to handle such and such things in, in, in such a way. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're getting to, the ma our main projects, like uh, our main community uh, projects. Uh, uh. And then we also have a consulti consulting arm where we now take on like actual industry projects like the COVID-19 uh, technical task force and uh, where we're de developing the, the, the decision dashboard for the office of the president. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. those are the three main pillars. We have networking, community events, mm -hmm. and, and then we also have our consultative arm. Um, Mm. So I think Carol so, 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 so if, 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 if that is, uh, uh, those are the pillars, mm -hmm. then how do you get the projects from, you know, these pillars that you have, networking, community events, and mm. uh, the, the, the third pillar was? Uh, the third one was co co projects. Co projects. Yeah, yeah. consulting. Uh -huh. Cons co consulting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how do you get them? Um, so, so mainly our projects are, are based on community and also yeah. based on issues uh, around women and girls. Yeah. Uh, so in as much as we do, um, our community is open to both um, ma ma male, male yeah, and female. Anyone. anyone <laughs> people, technically anyone who wants to join because, well, the industry is small. Yeah. Um, it's the space that we've created for people to network. So our projects come in through identification of issues that affect women and girls in the society. Mm. Mm. So around 2018, 2019, uh, we started something on, on, on gender-based violence. It, it, it was basically, someone asked a question during, um, during a capacity building workshop. How can, we, how can we map, how can we be able to map gender-based violence in Kenya? And how can we be able to identify factors that contribute or lead to gender-based violence in Kenya mm. for different locations? Um, that created a series of like thinking and a series of projects because then we realized after um, after research and after like working with different stakeholders realized uh, different factors in different areas contribute to GBV. Uh -huh. yeah. So for instance, you can say um, a domestic violence case in Nairobi is similar to a domestic mm -hmm. violence case in Kilifi or mm -hmm. in Kakamega. Mm -hmm. uh, all these cases are 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 are, are, are influenced. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, by location so like okay. location is a very important aspect in all this so we started doing such projects and su uh, and the impact of such projects is that we are able to guide uh, mitigation measures or we're able to guide um policy yes policy, policy. development of policy uh, okay. and, 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 and 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 grassroots organizations to actually have uh focus Focus measures, like if they are targeting Kakamega to be able to, to eliminate domestic violence, they know for sure mm -hmm. uh, the issue in Kakamega is probably not um, financial. The uh -huh. issue in Kakamega is educational, maternal and paternal education. So, so they target that. So, mm -hmm. so based on uh, that particular project, mm -hmm. uh, it makes me wa want to find out mm -hmm. uh, how far are we as a nation, as a country, in this fight against uh, you know, gender-based violence in both urban and... Uh, Rural, rural areas, areas. based on the project. Um, um, there's an index, there's a global index that has been identified by the, by the United Nations under yeah. SDG 5 for gender equality. Mm. So we are expected as a, as, as a, as a globe, globally, yeah. to be able to get to an index of, of, of one. Yeah. Um, so Kenya on this scale, we are not yet there, but also again, some areas of Kenya are almost there, some areas of Kenya are not yet there. Because mm -hmm. we, have, we have measures that, that are being implemented in different locations, but they're not getting the right, they're not getting the right impact on the ground because we are targeting the wrong thing. Mm. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if you have the numbers with you. Uh, uh -huh. do, do, do you have the areas that are almost there in Kenya? Yes, yes. Um, urban areas, urban areas are almost there because the three biggest factors that contribute to that contribute to, to domestic violence are maternal and paternal education. That is how educated uh, are the, the woman, women. the man, and the woman in the household <laughs> are. <laughs> so that is true. <laughs> yes. The level of education of a man or a woman can determine whether we will have high affinity of gender-based yeah. violence. Yes. yes. Because so, it also it also indicates the level uh, at which someone can disabuse themselves of harmful cultu cultural practices, mm -hmm. 
and usually that's the most impactful like when the like the correlation of education levels and um cultural biases is usually highly correlated that you're able mm -hmm. to see that um a high a, someone who's more highly educated mm -hmm. is able to easily disabuse of themselves of um, harmful cultural practices like uh, FGM, like mm -hmm. not taking your your uh, girl children to, <laughs> to do girls to, to, to school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, um, <laughs> what were the shule? Yes, yes. Education. I mean, there's so many other factors, there's so many other factors in but including but socioeconomic. Yeah. Outside of education, socioeconomic is a major factor. Okay. To, to so, w w what other projects uh, did you have? Maybe you can highlight just one more, and then you give me the, uh, a feature project that you have that um, you are looking out for. Yeah. Another interesting project which I learned so much from was on cervical cancer. Like she, uh -huh. like she mentioned, um, most of our projects are spur in the moment kind of questions. And mm -hmm. I think we were talking with some health practitioner, um, mm -hmm. fr friend of, who's a GS person, but is also a health practi practitioner. Mm -hmm. And we realized that a lot of women don't know so much about reproductive health. And, um, uh, and that conversation led to uh, cervical cancer and the oh, indicators oh. that as a woman you need to, to address or be aware of, or even the level of testing that you need to do so um that particular project was very interesting because i think we gathered about 94 um analyst data community data enthusiasts mm -hmm. who came together and we collected uh data set on cervical cancer and opened it up to the community and they were able to um do all kinds of analysis on it on the level of indicator that uh the kind of tests most kenyan women go for the the what is it the where these tests are where the tests oh, okay. are okay. yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. where and health facilities are what kind of treatment you can uh, you so can you can get started on mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah so so, so based on uh, uh, what you've done so far so mm -hmm. that is what stood up for you from mm -hmm. the projects that uh, mm -hmm. you did and I, i'm looking at the the impact that uh, these projects had mm -hmm. were you able to you know acquire from the ground mm -hmm. uh, that we did this project mm -hmm. and there is this story and there is this particular individual that uh, actually got influenced or got positively uh, you know uh, a challenge towards you know becoming a better person of themselves Do mm -hmm. we, did you have such stories that that came up yeah okay for me what i can say is mm -hmm. the conversation of women and uh, advocating for women and women empowerment is so much more easier 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 and more palatable mm -hmm. to the men or the stakeholders or the policy makers in our society because mm -hmm. when you have facts mm -hmm. you're not there saying it emotionally like i'm a woman take care of me but when you have the facts behind you when you have the statistics that guide you it's more of a nuanced conversation on this is exactly how we need to get there mm -hmm. and it's not emotional and that's the beauty of data that mm -hmm. we be data and technology mm -hmm. is taken out well, of course, there will be an emotional aspect to it, but we, it's taken out... It's about facts. Yeah, yes. it's taking out the biases that are there that someone can have a conversation right, based on the right, numbers. Right, right. And it, we are, you're able to have a very targeted, action-driven kind of approach to, towards policy. Mm -hmm. And not just, we feel like maybe you, we should improve education here. No, it's the, fa mm -hmm. the numbers are if you re improve education here, mm -hmm. this is the impact by this certain percentage and so forth uh, yeah. how was the impact on the ground um the impact on the, on the ground is amazing uh, so mainly what we use to to try and gauge impact on the ground is our community and the right. voice of the community uh -huh. yeah. so we have we have various community platforms that we that we try to monitor mm. and mostly what we do after after sessions is try and open up the discussions and and we realize that if someone comes to a session and we have trained on data analysis and we have taught them to do things mm. and we've run a project uh, like for instance on the cervical yeah. the, 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 the the cervical cancer project mm. uh, that uh, that project really opened up up conversations for us around um, availability of tests, the, the kind of tests, and mm. we, we noted that people from different locations, because we, um, we, have, we mainly do a lot of activities in Nairobi, but mm. that is a project that created impact in yeah, Kilifi, we yeah, had impact yeah. in Kakamega because we wow. had people in those locations and actual health practitioners asking for the visualizations, asking for the products that we had created for them to 
put yeah. in the hospitals, like mm. to, 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 to hang in the hospitals and encourage women to look at them and to talk about them and to basically have that conversation. Mm. Wow. Yeah, yeah it this also opened a larger conversation on why, what's the health, what's the test distribution in the country? Mm. Like the, that, that's a very important mm. question that now our health practitioners had evidence-based data to show that um, the three major uh, towns in, in the country are the only ones that have access to, uh, it, it was IP, HPV? Yeah. Yeah. In Nairobi, uh -huh. Kisumu, and, and uh, Kakamega. Macha, just Macha Kakamega. Was, yeah. Kakamega. Kakamega. Yeah. And okay. it, can you imagine that we're 47 counties yeah. and you can only test for cervical cancer, that particular test for in only four towns. I mean, that's evidence-based. That's not emotional that, that oh, we feel like we need to increase testing here. No, mm -hmm. that's been that these particular towns, these particular individuals will have to get to one of these four towns to be All able right. to have testing. Yeah. I, I, I want us to wrap this conversation up now. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I want to give you just 30 seconds each mm -hmm. to have a final word, to speak to women out there. Uh, you know, those who are watching you, what will be your parting shot to someone, to, to that person who is uh, watching you? Uh, let me start with you, Carol. Your camera is there. Okay. Um, last year, I, we, we got invited to a conference and someone asked me, what, is, uh, what advice would you give your younger self? Uh, then I didn't have an answer, but later on I thought about it and the answer I got was occupy space. Uh, what, uh, what that meant for me was that sometimes you think what you have is not enough, but when you actually talk about it, when you actually table it, when you, and when people actually see what you have, uh, you realize it's much greater that, the, than what you anticipated. So yes, All occupy right. space. Occupy space. Yes. Your parting shot, that is your camera. Yeah, um, I'll just put it very simply. Uh, do your best, try, put yourself out there. Uh, because you don't know what will come out of it. And the only thing you owe yourself is to try. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, that is Carolyn Nakot, an advocacy lead at uh, Women in GIS Kenya, and uh, Domboiselo Murage, the research and the development lead at Women in uh, uh, GIS KE, both co-founders. Thank you very much, ladies. It was a pleasure. Happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that brings us to the end of one in the morning. Thank you very much for keeping it Y254. Uh, it has been a pleasure having you from the beginning now to the end. My name is Ram Maguko. A blessed day to you. God bless you. God bless the work of your hands. Happy International Women's Day. <laughs>